Rutherford's Gold Foil Experiment by kscience.com. In 1909, the famous gold foil experiment was carried out by Rutherford and his team. This experiment proved the plum pudding model was wrong. Golton said the atom was a sphere of positive charge with electrons embedded throughout. Rutherford and his team proved this model was wrong. And we're now going to find out how he did this. The gold foil experiment would have looked something like this. It consisted of an alpha particle gun, a piece of very thin gold foil, and a fluorescent screen. To understand this experiment, we need to first start with the alpha particle gun, and we need to know what an alpha particle actually is. This is the symbol of an alpha particle, which is taken from the Greek alphabet. An alpha particle has a mass number of 4 and an atomic number of 2. It looks something like this, where the red circle represents protons, and there are 2 protons because the atomic number is 2, and the blue circle represents neutrons, and there are 2 neutrons because the mass number is 4, the atomic number is 2, so 4 take away 2 equals 2 neutrons. Alpha particles have a charge of 2 plus. This is because there are two protons, so this gives it a charge of 2 plus. There are two neutrons, which do not affect the charge. And then there are no electrons, so they do not cancel out the positive charge. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. In this gold foil experiment, Rutherford wanted to find out what would happen when an alpha particle gun fired positively charged alpha particles at the thin gold foil and he wanted to see how these alpha particles interacted with the atoms in the thin gold foil. They expected the alpha particles to pass straight through and be detected by the fluorescent screen. The job of the fluorescent screen was to detect the alpha particles. Rutherford expected the alpha particles to pass straight through, as Dalton's plum pudding model said the atom was very much made of a sphere of positive charge. Now Rutherford thought these dense, positively charged particles would pass straight through this cloud of positive charge. So what did actually happen? The results were, most alpha particles pass straight through, as shown by these dashed red lines which reached the fluorescent screen which detected the alpha particles. This dashed red line shows how some were deflected as they passed through the gold foil, being deflected off in different directions. And to their shock, 1 in 8,000 were repelled straight back. Because their results were different to their expectations, where they expected the alpha particles to pass straight through. This told them the plum pudding model is wrong. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. To explain these results and to understand how they came to the conclusion that Plum's pudding model was wrong, we need to look in more detail at how these alpha particles interacted with the atoms that make up the thin gold foil. These circles represent atoms and at the centre of these circles is the nucleus. These straight red lines going through the thin gold foil shows how the majority of alpha particles pass straight through. This red line shows the alpha particle coming in straight towards the atoms of the thin gold foil, getting very close to the positive nucleus of the atoms, 
and then being deflected downwards. This wasn't as common and only some were deflected. This happened because the positively charged alpha particles were repelled by the protons in the nucleus. The same charges always repel. Different charges will attract. Very rarely, some alpha particles coming in at a straight line would be deflected straight back as they were repelled by the positive charge of the nucleus. One in 8,000 alpha particles were deflected straight back. This happened because positively charged alpha particles bounced directly off the nucleus. So Rutherford realized for alpha particles to pass straight through, there must have been empty space. And because the majority of the alpha particles pass straight through, this means there was a lot in between the nuclei. Because the alpha particles bounced off the nucleus, this meant the nucleus must be very dense, as alpha particles themselves are very dense. So if they're going to bounce off something, the nucleus must have been very dense. And we know the nucleus has a positive charge, because the positively charged alpha particles were repelled by the positively charged nuclei. And because only 1 in 8,000 alpha particles were repelled straight back, this means the nucleus must be very small with a lot of empty space in between. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. Having described and analysed Rutherford's gold foil experiment, we can now understand Rutherford's nuclear model, which is another way of saying Rutherford's atomic structure. Rutherford's nuclear model shows how there is a small, dense, positive nucleus at the centre of the atom. And then these electrons move in a fixed path, but in random locations. Pause the video here to practice the keywords. The answers will follow. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. If stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. And don't forget to visit kscience.com. For more videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com and don't forget to like and subscribe.